Okay, so today we're going to be looking at uh, how we can calculate empirical formulas using combustion analysis. So first of all, we're just going to look at, well, how do we actually perform a combustion analysis? So I'll just draw out a little diagram right here. Okay, <clears throat> so what we have here is basically our sample chamber and then two little absorption chambers. And these absorption chambers contain different absorbents. Uh, usually, you know, this you know, depends all on the system you're actually using, but basically you need something here that absorbs uh, the water, which could either be something like uh, calcium chloride or magnesium perchlorate, so MgClO4. Two, and then something here which absorbs uh, carbon dioxide, which could be potassium hydroxide. So these could be the possible substances you would use. So what happens here is we take our sample and we apply a lot of heat. And remember this is combustion analysis, so you have to burn the thing. So you put your sample in there with a lot of heat. Uh, the oxygen um, is passing over this and then the sample literally just burns. And when it burns, it's going to produce carbon dioxide and water. So then the uh, combustion products, your water and your carbon dioxide, are then absorbed. So here we just use the calcium chloride or magnesium perchlorate. This absorbs the water. And then uh, the leftover CO2 passes through this and then is absorbed by the potassium hydroxide. And then at this point, all your combustion products have been absorbed. And then excess oxygen that was in the system just passes through there. And then what we do is, uh, after the reaction, we go here and measure for both of these your change in your mass. Right? And then from this, you can determine how much hydrogen and how much carbon you had in your sample. And also we can figure out how much oxygen we had in our sample as well by um, using a difference. So what we're going to do is just write down a few equations here that we're going to be using to figure out you know, how much carbon and oxygen and hydrogen we actually have in the sample. And it should be um, noted here um, that the sample is going to contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. If it contains other things like uh, nitrogen or sulfur, then you have to just use a different system. Uh, you can't do it with this particular setup. So we're just going to be sticking with a particular simple one, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We're not going to worry about anything more complicated. All right, so first up here, uh, when we figure out our change in our mass, we're going to figure out well, how much um, hydrogen we actually have in there. So the mass of my hydrogen in, and this is going to be the mass of the hydrogen in the sample itself, is going to be equal to the mass of the water. So that's what I'm going to be measuring over here. So how much change in mass I actually have is going to tell me how much water I absorbed. And this, of course, is going to be in grams. So we're going to have here one mole of uh, H2O is, of course, 18 grams of H2O. And then we're going to say, well, there are two moles of hydrogen atoms per one mole of H2O. And then I have here one gram of hydrogen atoms is one mole of hydrogen atoms. Now this is a little bit weird because always when we're doing the uh, stoichiometry you may remember you know it's always supposed to be H2 um, in these cases but here we're just dealing with the regular old um, element itself. So this is just going to be plain old hydrogen I and mean, well, later on we'll see plain old oxygen um, as well. Okay so this is going to tell us how much our mass of our hydrogen is. And we do something similar here for the mass of the carbon. So this is going to be the mass of the CO2 which we absorb. So we determine that by our mass difference. And then we have here one mole of CO2 is 44 grams of CO2. And we have one mole of carbon atoms is in every mole of CO2. And then uh, 12 grams of carbon atoms is in one mole of carbon. And that will tell us how, what our mass of our carbon is. Now, um, also you might, and just in case we missed it, um, here of course H2O, that's why we have two moles of H per mole of water because it's H2O, so that's just why there. And of course one mole of carbon because we have one carbon per one carbon. All right, now for the oxygen, we can't determine this just by the mass change because if you look at this, 
um, I have excess oxygen coming into the system, and I don't know how much is actually reacting. I mean, I, I guess I could measure how much comes out on the other side, but that's be more complicated, more prone to error also as well. So um, we can't just base it upon here because we have extra oxygen coming in, so we don't know how much comes from the sample, how much is from the outside. So what we're going to do is use um, simply the difference uh, between how much carbon and hydrogen we have and how much the sample actually weighed. So the mass of my uh, oxygen is going to be equal to the mass of my sample minus the mass of my hydrogen plus the mass of my carbon. And once I have this, you know, my hydrogen plus my carbon plus my oxygen mass is going to be my sample since we already settled that it just contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Again, if it was something else, you know, this system wouldn't work. Okay. <clears throat> So, what we're going to do now is do a little um, example. So, we're going to be looking here at um, aspirin. So, let's just say we have here a 5.000 gram sample of aspirin. And aspirin, by the way, is called acetyl salicylic acid, A-C-E-T-Y-L-S-A-L-I-C-Y-L-I-C -E -I -I acid. So, that's that's what aspirin, um, the, the, chem, the, the the nomenclature for aspirin is actually acetyl salicylic acid. When you get to it, if you, well, if you ever do any organic chemistry, um, you'll, uh, you'll see that. Okay, so this is our sample, and we do our little combustion analysis up here. So we, um, we're going to find out what our mass of our water and the mass of the carbon dioxide coming from this was. So we do this, and we get here 2.000 grams of H2O, and... Um, 11.000 grams of CO2. Okay, and we're just going to figure out um, our empirical formula. MPI. All right. So, <clears throat> first thing we have to do is determine uh, well how much hydrogen and how much carbon are in there. Then we'll figure out how much um, oxygen is in there. And then we can just uh, do the empirical formula stuff like we uh, did before. All right, so first up, we'll stick here with the water. So this is going to be my mass of my water, so it's going to be 2.000 grams of H2O. And, yeah, we can see that. So then I'm going to have here one mole of H2O is 18 grams. And then here, two moles of H is one mole of H2O. And then one gram of H per one mole of uh, H. Okay, so we uh, run this through, and that's just going to be 2 times 2 over 18, which works out to be, well, 2 ninths, which is uh, going to be 0 0.2222. Uh, two. Put an grams of hydrogen. Okay, so this is how many grams of hydrogen were, our, were in our original sample there. Uh, next up, we'll do the carbon dioxide. So that's 11.000 grams of CO2. And here, one mole of CO2 is 44 grams of CO2. And here I have one mole of carbon per one mole of my CO2. And then here are my 12 grams of carbon per mole of, of uh, carbon. 12 grams of carbon per mole of carbon. So this is going to work out to be 3.000 grams of carbon. So therefore, the mass of my oxygen is going to be my 5.000, oops, too many zeros, minus my 3.000 plus my 0.22. Two. And well, we could add an extra two in there, it doesn't really matter. Um, and this is going to come out to be 1.778 grams of oxygen. All right, I'm just writing oxy there instead of just the O, so we know that's actually oxygen and you know, not uh, you know, a, a number zero or something. Okay, <clears throat> so from this data, we can now uh, figure out our empirical formula here. So we'll just uh, set up our little uh, table like usual. So here we're going to have, you know, first of all our atoms. So there's going to be my carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. 
So this is my number of grams, and like we just figured out, that was 3.000, uh, 0 0.222, and 1.778. So of course, when we add all these up, um, they should be equal to 5.000 because uh, we just had over here um, 1.778 plus the 3.3 plus 0.222 is going to equal 5, so it better be equal to that. So this is going to be equal to my 5. Then we're going to figure out here uh, the percent. So this is going to be 3.000 over 5.000, and that's just going to be equal to 60%. Uh, I, yeah, let me write this. 60.00, because you always want to make sure you have the actual uh, numbers on there. So it's going to be 60.00. It just happens to work out to be uh, you know, a round number. Uh, and then over here, we're going to have my 0 0.222 over, I'm just going to write 5 just to clear up some clutter. And this is going to work out to be 4.44%. And then down here, 1.778 over 5. Uh, that's going to work out to be 35 0.56%. And of course, once you add all these up, uh, this is going to be 100%, which it should be, so you know, we know that we didn't screw up on any, uh, any math there. Alright, uh, the next up, uh, we're going to go here and 1 over uh, the atomic weight of each of these. So this is going to be 60.00 over my 12 for carbon, and that's just going to equal 5.00. Uh, and then over here, that's going to be my 4.44 over for hydrogen. That's just a 1, so that's just going to be equal to 4.44. And then down here for my oxygen, that's going to be 35.56 over oxygen is 16. And that's going to work out to be 2.22. Two. All right. And then uh, we go here and divide by the 1 over the smallest, okay? So each of these is going to be divided by the 2.222, okay? So that's going to be 5 over 2.222, and that's going to equal 2.25. Uh, here, my 4.44 over my 2.222 um, is obviously just going to equal 2.00, and then my 2.222 over 2.222 is obviously just equal to 1. Okay. And at this point, and this is why I always you know, tell you, make sure you have at least two decimal points here, because if you happen to uh, just go one decimal point, uh, you might have rounded this to two or to three, and then we would have a problem because um, you know, we're, we'd be multiplying it by, well, three or five, and instead we want to be multiplying this by four. So because this is a 0.25 over here, we're going to multiply everything in this case by four, so that's going to be 2.25 times 4, which is going to be a 9. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 times 4 is obviously 4. So this means that my empirical formula here is going to be uh, C9H8O4. And if you happen to look up uh, you know, the actual thing for aspirin or acetylsalicylic acid, um, you'll find that this is also the molecular weight uh, as well. All right, so I will stop it there.